Well, good morning, everybody. I'm really glad that you joined in. I'm Mike McGinnis. I'm the pastor here at First Christian Church, and we are concluding a series today called Being Positive in a Negative World. And I, I, I want to talk to you today about the ongoing struggle with a lack of confidence, which quite frankly, for most of us, I think it would be true in one area of life or another. And the reality is that almost all of us are uncertain about our ability to fulfill certain tasks in our life. Uh, many of us are unsure about our future, uh, or we feel very insecure when we are around other people. And so if you're like me, uh, you know, I have an insecurity when I feel like that I'm not being good enough. Whereas other people will say about themselves that they really lack confidence uh, in the way that they look. And so what we learn is, is that when we look at our culture, when we look at our world today, the unfortunate reality is that many people battle with chronic insecurity. And a lot of times we find it in our own self-talk, you know, when we kind of talk to ourselves, you know, the thoughts that, we say to ourselves that no one else hears. In fact, a lot of times, quite honestly, I will often find my voice, inner voice, saying negative things to me continually. And I'm quite confident that that's happening to a lot of people. And the tragedy is, is that there are many of you who are watching today, who are joining in, and you're just not living the life that God created you to live because you don't have confidence in the place that you should have confidence. And what happens is, is that we let our insecurity talk us out of God's calling for our lives, and it happens to people all the time. There may be those of you right now that uh, you're not interviewing for a job or you're not seeking a promotion because you're afraid that you're not good enough. There may be some of you, you're not going back to school because you feel like that maybe you're too old or people would laugh at you. And then there's some of you who want to maybe lead a group, uh, you know, like a life group or, or a Bible study or something. And, you know, you think that maybe no one is going to come or maybe you think that you're not skilled enough or maybe you think to yourself that you're not spiritual enough. And the result is, is that we miss an opportunity because of our insecurities. And oftentimes, we don't even attempt something for God because we just simply lack confidence. Now, that's the subject that I really want to talk to you about today as we're wrapping up this series and I want to start with a really important truth to remember that we all need to embrace, and it's this. We don't need self-confidence. In fact, I'm not here today telling you you need to be confident in yourself. We don't need self-confidence. What we need to do is that we need to cultivate God-confidence, and there's a big difference between the two. In fact, when I'm talking to you today about confidence, I'm not talking about being confident in yourself. I want to encourage you again today to cultivate God confidence. Now, where do I get this idea? Where, where do we get this understanding that we need to cultivate a God confidence? Now, there's a passage of Scripture that I want to encourage you to turn to and look at and uh, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse number 12. And I just want you to know that the context of this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is writing the church in Corinth, and he's talking to them about God's power and his provision for people. But here's what that verse says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 12. And it says, And so if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall, that you don't fall. Now, the message translation of this passage of Scripture says, forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. 
And again, you know, there is a little bit of difference in the way those two sound, but when you look at the overall context of the passage, our confidence is not found in our own abilities and ourselves. Our confidence is found in the power and the provision of God. That's where we need our confidence. And so he says, forget about, you know, your own confidence because it's useless. He said, cultivate God confidence. And so we're going to forget about self-confidence because, again, it's simply useless. And instead, we're going to ask God to develop something deep within us, a faith in God that is absolutely confident in Him. Now, in fact, I'll tell you why I'm not trying to be self-confident and why you shouldn't be as well. First of all, my heart is deceitful above all things, the Scripture says. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse number 9, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, who can understand it? In fact, Scripture reminds us that we have an unbelievable ability to deceive ourselves. Another reason why I'm not trying to be self-confident is because my flesh is weak. Because one day I can be spiritually speaking, you know, doing really well, and the next day I'm really off. And Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 41. He says, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the Apostle Paul goes on and says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 3, he says, I put no confidence in my flesh. In other words, he was talking about his sinful nature. Paul is saying, I'm not talking about a self-confidence because my heart is deceitful, my flesh is weak, and thirdly, because my behavior is is always inconsistent. You see, I'm passionate about God multiple days in a row, and then all of a sudden it seems like I can lose my focus. Has that ever happened to you? I feel like that that's probably true, though, of so many people. And I'm not going to put my confidence in myself to really be all that God created me to be. I want to be a person who cult cultivates a God confidence. Now, I believe with all of my heart that there is nothing wrong with becoming more confident in yourself in certain abilities and so forth because God gave you gifts and abilities. Therefore, you know that you can do it because God is strengthening you. And there's nothing wrong with feeling good about yourself. But if you really, really want to max out and live a life that completely glorifies God, you will never do it by putting confidence in yourself alone. What we need to do is remember that we can only do it when we cultivate God confidence. And so what I want to do today is I want to give you three truths that helps cultivate God confidence in our lives. And again, we're not going to cultivate self-confidence, but God confidence. The first thing is we need to recognize that my God is always for me. The reality is, is that so many people today have an inaccurate view of the character and the nature of God. And the reason is because they often feel like that God's love and God's favor and God's acceptance is tied somehow to our performance. We think to ourselves, you know, well, I, I did pretty good today, and so God will probably answer my prayer. Or maybe we think to ourselves, man, I just totally blew it big time today. God is disappointed. I better not ask anything of him now. And the reality is, is that we don't have consistently good spiritual days, and we fall short. And so many people think that, well, God must be angry at me. You know, he's going to get back at me. He doesn't want to bless me. 
But we have to remember that the reality is, is that God is our loving heavenly Father. Now, I just wonder, those of you who are watching today, how many of you are parents? And the reality is, for myself as a dad, I never ever wake up and think, you know, hey, I want something bad for my kids today. You know, I, I never think that. I never do. I always want them to be blessed. For Lauren, Levi, and Logan, I want them to be extremely blessed in their lives. I want their lives to be whole and complete. I want them well. I want them serving God faithfully. And I'm always and forever for my kids. Even when they're doing something that maybe I don't agree with, don't support, they're my children and I'm always for them. And I think you can understand that. Now, here's the truth we need to remember. God is always for you. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 31, What then shall we say, response to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? You see, because my God is for me, there is no power on earth greater than God. And therefore, I believe that he will get me through whatever I find myself in the midst of in this life. Now, I've shared many times with folks here at First Christian, you know, I, I coached both of my boys, Levi and Logan, through their multiple years of Little League. And when I coached, you know, I coached my teams to compete, uh, to think well, to always sharpen their skills, and also to give their absolute best when they're on the field. Now, but I hope and I pray that my boys never once ever thought that my love for them was conditional on their performance during a game or in any other arena or area of life. I love them simply because they are my sons. I love Lauren simply because she is my daughter. And when you have an accurate view of God and that he loves you, that changes everything. And I'm confident because my God is always for me, your God is always for you, then we're not going to live life for his approval. He already loves us with an unending love. And that's a promise that we just have to hold on to. And we have this because Jesus, because of him, we are acceptable to God. And it's not based on what we do or don't do, but it's based on the activity of Christ, what he did for all of us. For some of you, you want to get out of debt. And I want you to know God is for you and he wants to help you move forward there may be some of you who are in the midst of a broken relationship and you don't know what to do next listen god hears the cry of your heart and he wants to do what he can do to soften hearts and bring you to a place of healing in your life maybe you want to start a new business I want you to know that God is for you. He wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to other people. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to, he's not going to guarantee that you're going to be rich, but our God is always working and using everything to conform you and to conform me to the image of Jesus Christ, his son. You see, we don't have self-confidence we should cultivate God confidence. And we do this by knowing that our God is for us. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse number 35, he says, don't throw away your confidence. There is a reward for this confidence. And what does it bring you? He says a great reward. Because God is always for us. I'm not confident 
in myself. I'm not confident in my flesh. I'm not confident in my heart. I'm confident in the goodness of God and that my God is for me. Therefore, who can be against me? Now, secondly, I'm confident because my God always helps me. Now, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I know someone does right now. Someone here in Clearwater, someone here at First Christian Church or wherever you are watching online, you need to understand that God cares for you and he is here to help you in your life. The Bible says this in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verses 5 through 6. He says, keep your lives free from the love of money and content with what you have because God has said, neither will I leave you, neither will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So in other words, don't throw away your confidence. God is there. And there's something amazing that when you have a powerful helper, that removes fear. You know, a few years ago, uh, our washing machine at the house uh, all of a sudden just quit agitating, you know, kind of turning, you know, as it washes the clothes and it quits spinning to, to help rinse the water, get the water out and to kind of get the clothes a little dry anyway. And, and Jenny came to me and says, Mike, we need a new washing machine. Now, I'm a little bit of a tightwad, I guess you could say. I really don't like spending money, and, you know, I didn't want to go spend 500 plus for a new one. And so I had this idea that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to fix this washing machine. And, uh, but there was one problem. The problem was is that I didn't even know the problem. I knew it wasn't working, but I didn't know what the problem was. But I have a very good friend of mine back in Kentucky. His name's Rodney, and he is an appliance repairman. And on, as we were talking on the phone, you know, I, I, I explained to him the symptoms, and he gave me the likely diagnosis, and he told me what tools I needed, told me what part I needed, but there was one problem. You know, he was over 800 miles away, but he said, Mike, there's no reason to worry. He says, I can talk you right through this. And so I just determined, okay, Rodney, I'm going to trust you. And so I started doing everything that he said and then all of a sudden Jenny walks out into the garage and she looked at me and she said what are you doing and I said you know by this time the washing mas machine is literally spread out across the garage in multiple pieces but I answered with great confidence I'm fixing the washing machine now she kind of looked at me and kind of walked away but I had the ultimate Maytag repairman, master appliance healer on the other end of the phone. Therefore, I wasn't afraid. And guess what? That washing machine is still running today. Now, you see, when it comes to life, the Lord God is my helper. The Lord God wants to be your helper. And so because of that, when we trust in that, we have no reason to be afraid. Amen? Now, there's some of you right now, you're in the middle of a very difficult situation, and you need to recognize that your God is your helper. Just maybe your marriage is in trouble. I want you to know that God stands ready to help you bring healing into your marriage. You may be stressed financially, Scripture teaches us that our God is our provider. He delights in helping his children. You know, maybe you want to start a ministry. God stands ready to provide you to take that step of faith that you need in order to reach the people that he wants you to reach. 
Or maybe you've got a hard conversation to have. Listen, our God wants to give you, wants to give me, wants to give everyone the words to say. If we need wisdom, it says if you lack it, the book of James says, our God gives freely for those who seek it. And God provides the presence of his Holy Spirit to give you and I comfort and peace that goes beyond our human ability to understand. Now, it is said that God's word is a lamp to our feet that guides our steps and our path. Scripture reaffirms that God is indeed our helper. And there are many of you right now, you're in the middle of a really difficult time, and I'm telling you right now that the Lord is working and helping you. And some of you may be thinking and saying to yourselves, well, you know, Pastor Mike, I, I, I just don't feel like God is helping me right now. I want you to please listen to me. Because sometimes you can't see God's activity and how God is helping you in the moment. But you will see it in hindsight later on. When you look back, you can say, you know what? I maybe didn't see it at the time, but I realize now how God was helping me, how he was carrying me, how he was sustaining me, and I realized that wasn't on my own. I had and was experiencing my own footprints in the sand moment. The Bible tells us over in the book of Psalms, chapter, one, four, uh, chapter 46 and verse number 1, that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present in trouble. So we ask again, what is he? He's present. He's with me. He's with you now. Even right now, some of you are fighting back the tears. Our God is with you. He wants to speak to you. And he is working continually to help all of us who are his children. That is why I am not confident in my own abilities, but I strive to cultivate a God confidence. And my God is for me. My God helps me. And thirdly, I'm encouraged because my God is still working in me. The good news is, is that I'm not confident in my own abilities because I'm confident in God who's working in me. The Bible says this in the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. It says, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God is still working in me. God is still working in and through you. And maybe someone needs to know this because maybe you did something wrong this week and you feel the guilt and the shame. You need to understand that God is still working in you. There's someone else who maybe you have spiritual doubts and you think to yourself, you know, maybe by this time in my walk with Christ, I shouldn't have these type of doubts. But you need to understand that God is not finished with you yet. Our God is still working in you. Maybe there's others who feel like that you're stuck in a sin, maybe the same old sin that you just can't seem to get the, or have the ability to overcome and you think that this time, by this time in your walk with God, you should have been better, should have been much different, more holy. But know that God is not finished with you yet. Yes, we can always improve and we should be improving in our lives, but know that God is always working in and through you. There are some others who feel bad because you've been away from God. You've been away from God and you haven't been a part of the fellowship. You haven't been intimate with him and you feel bad. Well, that conviction is there to help draw you back to God because God is still working and God still wants to have that intimate, close relationship with you. Maybe you're listening to this message and that's encouraging because God brought you to this moment as you're watching online today 
Because God is not finished with you yet. He's still working in you. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion. Amen? Now there's confession time. We just need to just kind of reflect on here. I just want to be honest with you. I never, ever feel good enough to be the pastor of this church. I don't deserve it. I never feel worthy of it. Yet I'm confident because I'm not confident in myself. I have God confidence and that's something much deeper. When I'm not always faithful, I can always count on God being faithful. Because I'm cultivating a faith in the goodness of God. Because let me tell you what, God is for me just like he is for you. God is working in me and wants to work in you. He's not finished with me yet, and I know he's not finished with you. My God always helps me when I need it, and God is going to be working and helping you when you need it as well. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what voice of insecurity you are hearing and experiencing. But I just hope that you'll understand this, that you can be confident that our God who began a good work in you will be faithful to carry it unto completion. Why? Because he's for you. Because he's helping you. And because he's not finished with you yet. And that, my friends, is a reason why we can stay confident so that we can be positive in a negative world. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your power, and your provision. Help us to know that you're always working in us, you're always for us. You're always helping us. May we not rest in self-confidence, but may we trust in God-confidence. We thank you so much for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. We hope that you'll continue in your time of worship to God by taking communion as a family. Let's do this in remembrance of Jesus. We'd like to encourage you to take a few moments to worship through giving. You can bring a check or cash to the office. You can give online at fccclearwater.org. Click Give. Or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. We look forward to seeing you next week, church family. Love y'all.